Hi, this is Seth with vMix and welcome to this vMix overview tutorial video. In this video, we will go over some of the features of vMix, including inputs, titles, transitions, recording, and live streaming. This basic overview should have you up to speed in how to use vMix in no time. vMix is a live video mixing software that allows you to mix and manipulate a wide variety of audio and video sources similar to a traditional switcher you'd see in a broadcast studio. As those sources are mixed, vMix has the ability to live stream that video to the internet, record for archiving, as well as provide a video feed that can be distributed for viewing in live settings like houses of worship, TV studios, sporting events, schools, video gaming events, and more. Here we have a Windows 10 desktop computer with a fresh version of the vMix software. Once you install the vMix software, you'll see a vMix icon appear on your desktop. Let's go ahead and double click the icon to start up vMix. The vMix interface resembles a traditional hardware switcher. On the left of the program is the preview window. This window allows you to queue and preview different inputs such as live video sources, video files, images, titles, PowerPoints, and more. On the right of the program is the live output window. In traditional broadcast settings, this would be called the program output. This window displays the live feed that is being sent to live web streaming, video recording to your computer, as well as your full screen output. Down the middle of the window are the transition buttons. These allow you to change between the preview window and the live window using a variety of different effects such as cut or fade. Below the transitions is the T-bar. The T-bar allows you to manually transition between the preview and program window by clicking and dragging the T-bar from left to right. Also down the middle of the screen is the master audio level. This is the master volume level for the live output of vMix. Along the bottom of the screen are your inputs. This is where you can add, manage, and organize all of your different input audio and video sources. Let's go ahead and add a couple of different input sources to vMix. For this demonstration, I'm using an AJA capture card called the Kona 4. One of the many great features of vMix is that it supports a wide variety of third-party capture devices, including internal video capture cards, external Thunderbolt devices, USB capture devices, digital audio cards, and more. For a full list of compatible third-party hardware, go to the vMix website at vmixhd.com. Let's go ahead and add a live camera to our vMix session. To add an input to vMix, click on the Add Input button in the bottom left-hand corner of vMix. This brings up a new window that shows all the different types of inputs that vMix can bring into the program. You can see video, cameras, instant replay, photos, audio, and more. This is the main window used to add inputs into vMix. For this part of the tutorial, we're going to bring in a live video camera, so let's click on the camera tab on the left. Here we can see a couple drop-down menus. First, let's click on the camera drop-down. This will show us a list of all available video inputs coming into our computer. Here we can see four channels on our Kona capture card. The camera that we want to select is on input number two, so I'm going to go ahead and select input two. Below the camera is the input connection type. We have an SDI capture card, so I'm going to have SDI selected. Below the input, we have the resolution. Our resolution is 1920 by 1080. Below the resolution is our frame rate. The frame rate of our camera is 59.94p. The resolution and the frame rate might change depending on your camera, so select the appropriate settings for your input. To finish adding the input, click the OK button. Now we can see that our video is coming into vMix. Over here we have a secondary monitor that is connected to our video card. This secondary monitor is displaying whatever is in the live preview window. This is a great way to see what the video source is of our live program. We can see that our full screen is on because the full screen button at the top of the window is green. If we click that full screen button, you can see that our full screen turns off and we can see our Windows desktop. And if we press it again, our live preview output now shows on this monitor. Let's add a second camera. I'm going to click input again, camera, and this time I'm going to select input number one and hit OK. Now we can see we have a second camera in our vMix session. Now let's add a video file. Again, let's click add input. 
and select the video tab at the top. And now I'm going to browse to my desktop where I have a pre-recorded video clip. I'm going to select the clip and click open. Next I'm going to click OK. Now we can see that our video clip has been added into vMix. To preview this video, we can go ahead and click on the input and it will show up in our preview window. If we want to play the clip, we can go ahead and click the play button right below the preview window. Now let's take a look at a couple transitions. To transition from the preview to the live window, we can go ahead and click the quick play button for a quick fade and you can see that our preview window now goes to our live output as we can see here on our secondary monitor. Let's go ahead and click cut which does an immediate transition and now we have four programmable transitions below those two transitions. In this session we can see zoom, slide, vertical wipe, and fly. Let's go ahead and click zoom. Slide, vertical wipe, or fly. To change these transitions, simply click the drop down menu on any of these four transitions and select the desired effect. The duration of these effects can also be changed by clicking the drop down menu and entering a time in milliseconds at the very bottom of the menu. Let's go ahead and change the zoom effect to 1000 milliseconds or one second. Now when we click the zoom button, the zoom takes one second to complete. Below the transition buttons is the fade to black button. Here on our secondary monitor is our live video output. If we click on the fade to black button, it fades our live output to black. Now you can see that we can still see our live output here in our vMix screen, but on our output you can see that it's gone black. If we click it again, it will bring the video back. Below the fade to black button is the T-bar. The T-bar is directly connected to the first transition effect. Here in our session, fade is our first effect. So when we use the T-bar, it uses a fade effect to transition from the program to preview window. If we change this effect, it changes the effect on the T-bar. So let's change it to fly. Now when we use the T-bar, it performs a fly effect. Let's go ahead and add a title to our video. To add a title, click on the Add Input button and click on the Title slash XAML tab on the left. Here we can see a list of pre-done titles. Let's go ahead and click News HD and click OK. Now we see a new window with a couple of fields for our title. First is the headline. Let's change this to Evan Craft, who is our artist here in the video. And under description, if we click the description tab, let's put music video. Now that we have our title in vMix, let's go ahead and overlay it on our live video. To do this, let's go ahead and click the one button underneath the preview window of our title. As you can see, the title is now overlaid on our live output. If we press the one button again, it will be taken off. As you can see in our vMix session, each one of the inputs has numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 along the bottom of each input. That stands for each one of the different overlay channels within vMix. These can be separately configured in the overlay menu in the bottom right hand corner of vMix. For a more in-depth tutorial on how to use overlays, go ahead and click the link right here to watch that now. Let's go ahead and set up a recording. To do this, click on the gear icon next to the record button in the bottom left hand corner of vMix. Now a new window has popped up showing us a list of different file types that vMix can record to. For this demonstration, let's record to an MP4 file. So we have MP4 selected here on the left. Next, let's select the destination of the video file. To do this, click on browse and let's go ahead and save to the desktop and change the file name to music video. Next, let's select the resolution of our video recording. I'm gonna change this to 1280 by 720. Next is our frame rate, which I'm gonna to change to 29.97p, and then our bit rate. The bit rate of a recording is directly tied to a file's size and quality. For this recording, I'm gonna select four megabits a second. 
All of these recording settings can be changed based on what kind of quality and size you would like your video to be. Down the bottom of the screen, you can also choose to save the record file at different intervals. Go ahead and click OK to finish. Now we're ready to start recording. To start recording, press the record button. Now it turns red, indicating that vMix is currently recording. We can also see at the top of the window a record icon right next to the full screen button. This also lets us know that vMix is recording. Next to the recording button are two sets of numbers. The first set of numbers is the duration of the recording. As we can see here is currently at 20 seconds. The last number here is the number of dropped frames. If any dropped frames occur during a recording, it's probably an indication that you're lacking in processing power either on your processor or on your graphics card. To stop recording, go ahead and press the record button again and a window will pop up verifying that you want to stop recording. Let's go ahead and click yes. That's a simple way to record anything that's coming to your live window. Let's finish up this overview by taking a look at live streaming. To configure your live streaming, click on the gear icon next to the stream button along the bottom of vMix. A new window will open up showing the overview of your live streaming settings. To be able to live stream to the internet, you will need a live streaming service provider. There's a list of live streaming service providers underneath the destination tab. You can also use your own third party streaming provider as well. So when you set up your streaming session, you'll need two things. You'll need your URL and your stream name. If you're using one of our streaming providers, you can click them on this drop down menu. So let's go ahead and select Cloud Media Group. And I have a username and password that I can log in with. And I can select any of these channels that are unique to my service provider. If you're using a streaming provider that doesn't show up in the destination drop down, you can go ahead and select Custom RTMP Server. Whatever streaming service you're using should provide you with an RTMP URL as well as a stream key. This is where you're going to input that information. Next, you can configure your input size and frame rate of your streaming by clicking the gear icon here. If you want to stream to a different resolution or frame rate, you can change that in this window. Let's go ahead and click OK. Under the quality dropdown is a list of generic quality templates for streaming. For this demonstration, we're going to stay on the default quality. If you want to make any changes to any advanced settings of your streaming quality, you can click the gear icon and make any changes in this window. Lastly is the application. vMix can use two different applications for streaming. The first application is FFmpeg and the second is FMLE, which stands for Flash Media Live Encoder. For this session, we're going to use FFmpeg. To start streaming, click on the start button either here in this window or you can hit save and close and hit the stream button at the bottom of the vMix window. Once you click the window, the streaming button will turn red and you will also see a streaming icon at the top of the window indicating that you are currently live streaming. To stop streaming, click the stream button again and a dialog box will pop up verifying that you want to stop streaming. Let's go ahead and click yes. And now the streaming icon at the top of the window and the button at the bottom of the window is no longer red. So now we know that vMix is no longer streaming. Thanks so much for tuning in to this brief overview video of the vMix software. We have more in-depth tutorials in all the areas we covered in this video on our YouTube page. Or you can click the links right here or in the description below.